Let's you to you Dead Scared Entertainment. This is Pierce Horvath back with another Dead Scare Draws. And this one we're doing is the Friday the 13th pinup. Let's get into it. So, if you're watching this, you're probably realizing, wait. This is being posted way after Friday the 13th. And you're right. There's so much going on with Dead Scare Entertainment right now. In particular, if you're watching this in the month of June, congratulations. Thank you so much for being around for Dead Scare Entertainment during our celebration of Gypsy Rama Traveler History Month. There's been so many videos that we've been posting. We've been trying to keep in touch with the community as much as possible. And it's just so great to see the outturn of how many people that are interested in our Romane culture, Roma and Gajan Lake. It's so great. And with that being said, I feel extremely inspired to continue doing this, whether it be talking about the culture, creating cool art like this, or even like now in the future, creating more content in regards to my love of bat conservation, my experiences in a lot of the haunted or the vintage places here around the city of Chicago and the other places that I visit. There's so much that we cannot wait to release to you all, including hopefully crossing our fingers once we have the right kind of funding, creating some short films. So. If you're following along and you're looking to find some information about the illustration process, I made it a point to allow the costume and her expression to sell that sense of sensuality rather than essentially letting the pose be very overt, very um, outwardly voluptuous. You're probably wondering, well, why don't you just go on for like some kind of I don't know, like skimpy Jason Voorhees look. You know, that's Friday the 13th, right? I'm like, outside of that very famous franchise, there was a whole history of black hats, ladders, broken mirrors, and other different particular iconography when it came to this particular anomaly during the calendar. And throughout this, I would like to discuss not only just my process, but I also pulled up some interesting facts about Friday the 13th, in particular, the many occurrences, lucky and unlucky, that have happened over the years on this particular date. But before that, you notice that I just flipped my image. That's because one of the things that helped me distinguish what's working, what's not working, keeping my proportions in check is flipping the image because when you see the mirror image of your piece, you're able to distinguish between what is working, what isn't. It's kind of just that one of those dead giveaways. And I try to do this as frequent as possible, but the majority of the time I do it towards the beginning of the process while I'm still kind of working in the so-called pencil phase. And already I'm at that point where I'm like, you know what, I'm pretty confident in what my lines have to say. So I went in with this charcoal pencil. Now, lately, I have found that there's a lot more charm with this particular type of brush rather than just a plain old ink brush, which gets the job done. If you look at the majority of my pieces in the past, they're all usually in that sort of cartoony type of ink. Now, for some of us, we really do consider this day a very unlucky day. And I've known people who watch their steps when it comes to this particular type of Friday. I don't blame them. Things happen. But then again, I've heard of crazier things happening the next day. You know, you kind of got to treat it like a 
April Fools, essentially. You know, a lot of people say like, oh, well, she's still pregnant on the second, you know. So it all depends. That's the way I see it. It's a frame of mind. If you want to make this particular day unlucky, then it's going to be unlucky. But if you want to have some fun and you want to consider this a chance to be a little bit more spooky and kind of get into that mood, by all means do that. That's definitely what I do. So if you notice, as I'm going in and I am inking this pose, I'm using the lines that I place down as just rough guidelines. Not particular, oh, well, I have to stick to the tracing of these lines. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Because, again, as you're working, and the great thing about working in digital is you're allowed to have this sort of leeway, is that you're constantly refining your piece, trying to make it better, trying to, again, work on your proportions, as well as the clarity of the silhouette, which is extremely important, especially when you're working with pinups. Because, don't get me wrong, we all love to see a very pretty lady. But if we're not able to understand what the pose ha has to say, it kind of defeats the purpose. Now, one thing that I kept running into in terms of an issue with this piece was her lips. I don't understand it. Usually lips are super simple, but I just could not find the right shape for the world of me while making this piece. And you'll see I'm going back and forth on this one. So while I'm completely driving myself insane, let's talk about the first occurrence according to Reader's Digest. So on Friday, October 13th, 1972, a plane crashed in the Andes. 12 people died instantly and survivors resorted to cannibalism. Huh. Isn't that something? That was probably the longest Friday the 13th in history because the bad luck just kept coming. On that same day, in Russia, same day, hmm, now I wonder if that was that same day in 1972, or are we just saying Friday the 13th in general, but back to this, that same day in Russia, 174 people were killed when a Russian airliner crashed on landing near Moscow. Huh. So I'll say thus far from this article, I'm being told by Reader's Digest that it's not a smart idea to be flying on Friday the 13th. So back to the piece. <laughs> Now, if you look at how I treated the color, this is not a plain old black. The outline, the charcoal outline of this piece is the actual black. I was going for this sort of off black, basically like a super dark purple, like a bluish purple. And then I wanted the background to be red just because red always stands out so well. And especially when it, comes to a pinup red is I, I mean when you look at a pinup it's practically essential notice though once I got a, a feel of this I realized that it just the black flattened the image immediately 
So what I did was I went in and I started to color in all of the lines by creating the um, alpha lock. Again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments on how I'm referring to this, but essentially if you look at the layers tab area on your screen, you'll notice there's this checker box that is selected. And what I did was it allowed me to go in and just edit the quote unquote ink lines that I originally placed in black. So at this point, I'm just laying in my basic colors, my flat colors. And from this point now, I'm gonna slowly but surely start adding in highlights and shadows in order to round out these forms of the figure. So I wonder, what's the craziest thing that happened to you on Friday the 13th? Let me know in the comments. Back to our Reader's Digest. On Friday the 13th, Friday, August the 13th, now this was back in 2010, so this was recent, wow, a 13-year-old boy in Suffolk, England was struck by lightning. The lightning reportedly hit at 1.13 or 1313 in military time, oof. The boy survived unharmed. <laughs> Okay, let's take a moment to analyze this. Now, one would consider this unlucky, but I'd say this boy completely used up all the luck he had for a good chunk of his life, if not his whole life. Because the simple fact that he was struck by lightning at this particular time, mind you, 13-13 on Friday the 13th, and somehow made out of this without injury? That's on. That boy's lucky. On a very unlucky day. So now we're gonna focus on the infamous mask. I wonder if I had a choice to pick a mask to represent this iconic figure in horror, would I have chosen the same mask? I don't know. Because don't get me wrong, it is scary. It does have that very menacing look. It has that sort of blank, expression that just befits the genre but I don't, I don't know i'm really interested to see what you can really use to amp up that sort of menacing look but either way i still love it not gonna lie though I, to think of him in another mask is very tough but at the same time you know as an artist, you're always questioning things, always wondering how you can twist things. In particular, like with my piece, how could I take old school iconography when it comes to the, the, the date? And how can I bring in a little bit of the element of the famous franchise? 
And sure enough, I was able to come up with this composition. I hope you guys like it, by the way. I know I enjoyed making it, and that's why I'm sitting here talking about it. And could you believe, when I was doing this blade, when I was doing the machete, this is one of the very few, if not the first time, that I rendered a metallic object. The majority of the stuff that I deal with is either cloth, or has like a fur, or even a scale-like texture. But yeah, I rarely find myself dealing with metal. And for those of you who are artists, who are out there trying to learn how to render texture, who are just in general trying to create believable forms in your work, tackle the things that scare you or you're not used to. I should listen to my own advice, by the way. I know I've said this before on the on the other Dead Scare Draws, as well as in other places, and even when I meet other artists and young artists as well. Tackle the things that scare you, because the only reason they really scare you is because you don't know them yet. Fear of the unknown, that's something we all deal with to some extent. Now, this next tidbit from Reader's Digest. Unlucky, not so unlucky, I don't know. This is an in-between again. On Friday the 13th, in October of 2006, nearly half a million people lost power when Buffalo, New York, and the surrounding suburbs were buried under 22 to 24 inches of snow. Western New York is used to a lot of snow, but 24 inches in October? You know, for somebody who lives in Chicago, who still has to wear sweaters in as we approach the middle of June, it's still kind of the beginning, but we're approaching the middle of June. I'm not surprised. Um, I've dealt with so many... Halloweens where I had to wear coats over my costume. I can't tell you how many Easter's I had to end up bringing out the boots for. It doesn't matter at this point. Now, we're reaching the end of the piece. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. I say the unluckiest part about it is the fact that they lost power. That always stinks. It's terrible. But like I'm saying, look at how pretty she turned out. And I kind of went for almost like a like a velvet texture. Again, it may have came across, it may have not. This is, and realize this too, a lot of your pieces, especially when you're working pretty quick, there's going to be hits and misses in everything, regardless of what you're doing. It's always a process. But the best thing to do is look at the things that are working, look at the things that aren't, and keep those things in mind when you hit the next piece. Or if you decide to, later on in the future, come and hit the piece again in a new rendition. I'm going to start doing that, actually. That's something I would like to do because I've done a huge chunk of work back in the past, and I'd like to come back in and try to give everything another stab. <laughs> you see what I did there? Mm -hmm. Great. So, as I'm finishing up the piece, I'm going to be adding some overlaid layers of some paper texture because, again, that's my thing. I love that. Love adding just that little bit of vintage touch to everything that I do. And it's very hard sometimes to pick on which, um, like now, layer style to, to choose from because a lot of them bring out different aspects of the piece, especially when it comes to color. You know. And then always gotta end the bat in the corner. 
just because it's fun. I love that. You know, whenever anybody asks, well, what's your favorite thing in terms of design that you ever made? I'm like, Psh, that local, that's it. But this piece is up there now too. And with that being said, that is our finished rendition of our Friday the 13th pinup. Thank you all for watching so, so much. Cannot wait to see you all back here again during the next Dead Scare Draws. Take it easy.